everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to kettle dye some yarn and investigate the differences once again between adding all the dye onto our yarn at once versus adding the color onto the yarn in three different stages to see what differences we may see in color. Now, I have done this type of video a couple of times in the past, including more recently, where I layered three different colors onto yarn separately versus combine them all together at once, and also using just a single color to create a tonal, seeing what the differences we see when we add all of the dye at once versus dye it in three different stages. Now today, we are going to look at a single color that we mix but I'm intentionally going to pick a color or create a color that breaks. So that way we can see, I think, something that could be a really fun effect. At least that's my hypothesis, but we won't know until we try it. Now, before we jump in, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner today, Leslie Thurman. Leslie, thank you so much for being my lab partner, and I really hope you're going to love your yarn. What is color breaking? Color breaking is when you have a mixture of dyes, which is all mixed together nice and beautiful. Uh, and then when you dye the yarn, you see it separate into the various pigments that are in there. Most dramatically, like with Wilton's Violet, you can see it separate into pinks and blues because that red number three, that pink strikes to yarn a lot faster than the blue pigment. And this allows the yarn to sort of soak up those pinks more quickly and immediately when the yarn comes into contact with the dye. And then the blues that take longer can spread a bit further, which gives you multiple different hues. So if we do this in one stage, then we'll probably see some beautiful breaking. But if we do this in multiple stages, the breaking will layer on top of one another, which could go a couple different ways. It could average out the colors a little bit more, or we might some see something that feels a little more dramatic. I don't really know, but I am excited to find out. Today we will dye a total of 400 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. This yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And because it is non-superwash, it does absorb color a little slower overall, but uh, some colors do strike really, really fast, and we can still see extraordinary dramatic breaking on this base. You may have guessed already, but today we are going to play with food coloring to achieve this gorgeous breaking. Using Wilton Colorite's food coloring systems, uh, base pink, base blue, and base black. Now the base pink is just red number three, the base blue is just blue number one. And these are two pigments I mentioned at the beginning that have the most dramatic difference in the rates that they absorb to yarn. And I thought we'd also add a little bit of some black, which has all of the, well not all, but it has all of the uh, different food coloring molecules that are currently in the Wilton Colorite line mixed together. It does lean a bit blue, but it also brings some yellows and other reds into the mix as well, uh, just to have a little more fun and drama to our yarn. <laughs> Now I'm personally comfortable dyeing yarn with food coloring in my kitchen using cooking pots and pans. Today I am going to use my dedicated dye equipment because I enjoy using that for filming more, uh, but I do have a number of videos uh, that I have done where I use cooking pots and pans, and so I think that starting to dye yarn with food coloring is a really great way to get started on your journey. To dye yarn with food coloring, you need to make sure you pick the right type of yarn. Food coloring works wonderful to dye wool and other protein-based fibers, uh, but unfortunately does not work on cellulose fibers like cotton or synthetics like acrylic and polyester. Uh, then you just need to have some acid. I like to use vinegar and some heat and your artificial food coloring, of course, and then you're all set. All right, let's start with our black. Uh, this food coloring is fairly pigmented. I'm gonna do, I think, just one drop of black into our mixture that's divided into three, and then we're gonna do three drops of black. 
uh, in the one where we're combining all the colors. Our goal is to have the same amount of pigment total in each batch. It's just in one case, well, you're going to add it in three stages. In the other case, it'll be all at once. Now, as for the pink, let's do four drops of pink in each. One, two, four, and then 12 drops over here. Okay, and then I want to do some blue. And then we can test the color and we can always add more. Let's go ahead and do two drops of blue in each. One, two, and then six drops of blue here. I really enjoy uh, the Colorite food coloring system. I find that the droppers are, the consistency isn't that consistent, but there's only eight colors in the line. Ooh, that's pretty. Uh, there's only eight colors in the line, and uh, I think that overall it works really, really nicely, and the colors dissolve in water really easily. And they're very, very pigmented. So let's think how many drops have I used total. Okay, I think we have 21 drops of food coloring total per batch, and we'll dye 200 grams of yarn in each uh, batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more drop of blue, and then three over here, and then do another one of pink. Just add a little bit more pigment. I did catch myself. I need two more drops of pink right here. And then we can stir. <laughs> so let's check out this color. So the color we have is a beautiful sort of deep blue color, but you can really on this paper towel see the dramatic breaking that we have where you can see it splitting into those purples and then brighter blues. Uh, and I am very excited to see this on some yarn. In each of my two dye pots, one is currently off camera, we are starting with 16 cups of water and I am gonna add five tablespoons of white vinegar. Four would have been enough for all of those blues to strike to our yarn, uh, but I wanna have a little bit more because I do want there to be uh, some variation. Actually, I guess I should have done a little bit less if I wanted to really maximize the difference. Uh, if we had started with, say, only two tablespoons of white vinegar, the reds would strike and the blues wouldn't quite strike yet. yet. But I think it'll still be fine. It's not an outrageous amount. And well, if, if we don't end up with breaking here, then we'll just try again another day. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, but I don't want to add the dye until we, the pot is hot and we're ready to add the yarn because since we already have acid in here, with that red number three, that base pink color, if that comes into contact with the acid a little too soon uh, before the yarn is really present, then we will start to see some of those reds crash out of solution and that can be frustrating. So. Uh, we're gonna get things heated up and then we'll come back. All right, I decided that in the larger pot, uh, we will do our more uh, concentrated color that we're gonna do all in one step. Gonna add the dye, stir it up quickly, and then come add the yarn. Like so, and already, you can see some of the breaking, and I'm not going to stir it up a ton uh, because I want to allow some breaking to remain. Uh, but you can see that we've got purples and blues in there just because those reds, man, those reds can strike really fast. There is a little bit of liquid left in the container, so this is how I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to fill the cup with water and add it towards that outside area to leave no dye behind but this is all in one step. Again, I could stir things more, but since this is a non-superwash yarn, things will strike pretty quickly. Uh, we might see, we might lose some of those bright blues or maintain more depending on how much of the reds are currently left. And I am curious, but you can see that the liquid is looking quite blue already. So, 
let's go and do the first round uh, of the lighter color. But we'll check back in on this. I've reduced the heat to low. We'll check back in in probably 30 minutes or so. The, the timing is flexible. <laughs> Here is our other pot and I am going to add the first small batch. We have a lot less pigment in here. It's a third of the pigment that we had in our other batch. And we are gonna come in and add our yarn, sort of quickly, gently poking it in. And so you can see that things are less bright. And I'm not sure if on camera you can really see the pinks, uh, but I do see the breaking here. I think it'll be easier to see once we remove the yarn from the pot. And once again, with the leftover color in our pot, I'm gonna add it to the outside edge. And now we'll wait uh, until all of this color has absorbed, which I'm not quite sure how long it might take, but let's go ahead and wait. We'll check back in in 15 minutes and see where we are. If this were a super wash yarn, I definitely would stir it more once I added it to try to distribute the color onto the yarn a bit more. I'm not worrying about that today because as I mentioned, since this is non super wash yarn, the colors will take more time to strike and will spread out more. But anyway, while we wait, let's go and talk more about uh, becoming Dye Pot Weekly Lab Partners. Lab partner Leslie, I really hope you are enjoying this video. And if you at home would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner for an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find more information in the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Dye Pot Weekly lab partners pick the yarn base, tell me some colors to avoid, and then I create a surprise video and colorway uh, that I think that they will really enjoy. And it's so much fun and you get shout outs in the video, it's a lot of fun. You can also choose to become a last minute lab partner where you can look through a list of videos I've already started filming and see some hints on the technique and the final colors in addition to the yarn base and pick the video that you would like to become the lab partner of and then I will film some last minute shout outs to you to insert into the video. Thank you, thanking you for being my lab partner for that project. If any of this is a little confusing, feel free to message me on Etsy and I'm happy to explain more of the differences. Uh, but yeah, anyway, Leslie, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. <laughs> it's been 15 minutes and most of the color has absorbed. So I am going to go ahead, ooh, this is pretty. This is nice and broken. There is a hint of some blue left in here, but I think that we can go ahead and start getting ready for our second round of color. Here is the warm yarn after that first stage, and we have areas that have more blue and less blue. And so my hypothesis is that when we add these in on the next round, uh, I don't think I'm gonna move, yeah, let's move the zip tie actually. Let's move the zip tie down a quarter on both just to shift uh, what yarn goes in first. But because we're gonna add the yarn in again. Some of these areas that are more blue are gonna have access to those pinks first. And so my hypothesis is that the breaking may get different. Not necessarily less dramatic, but I think that we might potentially see a few more layers and tones in here. Maybe, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I still have not touched the yarn in our other bucket, but I'm gonna add our dye stir things up and then quickly quickly come over oh dear and add the yarn we are not dip dyeing specifically here uh, dip dyeing is something i love to do which gives you i guess more control over the breaking because you know the colors that strike the fastest will be on one end versus the other uh, but this time yeah just going in and Gonna let this sit to do its thing. But one last thing I wanna do, the last tiny bit of color, I'm coming over to, I'm always adding the extras on a purple edge 
anyway uh, because that's the least amount of disruption. But anyway, let's wait 15 minutes and then we'll come back and check in. While we wait, this has only been here for 15 minutes, but let's see. It looks like basically all of the color has absorbed. So I am gonna go ahead and add, for the final 15 minutes, a bit more acid, just because there's no harm. Let's add another three tablespoons of white vinegar, and I'm gonna let this continue to sit. I'm not gonna move it. And you can see we definitely have some amount of bright blue. There likely will be more because of how the yarn is sort of sitting in the pot. But we'll take, we'll remove it from the pot after we have done the third round on the other pot. Let's take a peek. Most of the color has absorbed. It's okay if there is still some color left in here that hasn't all struck to the yarn yet, since most of it has. I feel okay going on to our next layer and ooh, I'm not sure yet if we'll shift the zip ties again. But this is really pretty. Yeah, I see like the tiniest hint of blue left in the pot, but let's go look at the yarn. There's definitely more variation on here from our second layer. We still have a fair amount of blue, uh, which I think is really exciting. So I am moving I have no idea if this is the same direction or what, but I am going to move the zip ties around the bend yet again, and we're going to go add this in for our final layer. Moving the zip ties just allows me to make sure that I am not adding the same part of the yarn in first every time. Uh, but, I mean, it would be okay if that were to happen, but it just allows me to mix it up. And then as I let the yarn come in and gently poke it down, it also just means the way it goes into the pot overall is different every time. And now, let's see, purpley section to add that last little bit. Uh, and we'll pop back over in 15 minutes to add more vinegar to here so that way everything can absorb, but I'm not gonna touch it until then. Okay, I'm gonna now turn off the heat uh, from the pot where we dyed everything all in one round. And now, if I can find my zip ties, we can go ahead and, ooh, remove the yarn. And we have beautiful breaking in here, light and dark patches. Uh, we know that we've got lovely breaking on the other one as well, but my hypothesis is that the breaking might be a little more striking here and that things might be a little more even on the other one. But we'll see once everything is cool and dry. Uh, but we have very dramatic breaking over here, lots of purple and blues. And so I'm gonna set the yarn aside to let it cool completely before we wash it. I am now going to turn off the heat and we can remove the yarn. And we absolutely still have breaking here, but at first glance, certainly the patches are smaller. There's a little bit more blending, but this is still super lovely. And so I'm gonna set it aside to cool and then we can wash all the yarn all together. Let's wash all of the yarn together. And I do have our yarn that was all in one pot, has the more greener zip ties and the purpler zip ties are on the layered color. And right away, I can say that the breaking and differences I see on our one pot yarn, it's more extreme than what we see when we layered it where it is more subtle. And this is especially fun and cool to play with, but we'll talk about this a lot more once the yarn is dry. I'm now gonna add a little bit of some dish soap. I do wanna be careful because this yarn is non-superwash, so I don't wanna agitate it, but we are not seeing any bleeding at all. So I am going to go ahead and carefully 
rinse out this soap. Uh, then I'll put the yarn through the spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we can come back and really compare the yarn and the differences there. And so I think that this uh, is really going to highlight uh, some conclusions that uh, I thought that maybe I would see in one video, but with just one color it was a lot harder to see. So I'm very excited here and well actually I want to chat a bit before we go look at the finished yarn. I picked food coloring for this project in part because my lab partner Leslie mentioned something about breaking food coloring to me, but also because I knew I could get dramatic breaking. There are a lot of commercial acid dyes that break as well. Some that come to mind are Twilight Gray, uh, Purple Pop is a very dramatic one, but I didn't want to use Purple Pop because it can take a long time to get all those residual pinks to bind to the yarn. And by a long time, I mean you want to let the pot cool off completely. And so I just knew that that would take longer, like I would probably want to need to spread it out over a couple days to do each of the stages there. And so if you would like me to do this with something like Purple Pop, I am happy to do so. So let me know down in the comments below. But I wanted to pick something that I felt like we would be able to really see the difference between layering in three steps versus doing it all at once in one pot. And I really do think that from what I see now, I do see a difference that should be a little easier to articulate. And yeah, I also do want to try this again using a single color that doesn't necessarily break, but going for something more medium tone versus dark like I did uh, that other time. But anyway, it's, it's fun to play around with different techniques. And I think that this example with the breaking helps make some of the differences between doing things at once versus maybe layering it in steps. I think that this exaggeration of the breaking will hopefully help share some differences that you can have there and why you may not want to add all the dye on the yarn at once or why you may want to. So let's go look at the dry yarn and see how it turned out. The results are in and it is pretty clear that we do have a difference in what we see when we added all of the color at once or when we used the same amount of color but added it in three different batches. Now over here we absolutely see color breaking. We've got blues and purples but what we don't have is the same extremes that we have over here. I would say that the pinkest areas still feel similar, but the bigger difference comes with the blues, where we have some super pastel and then more bright blues, whereas over here, those blues, those same blues feel like they have a tiny bit of red in it. They're just a little bit less bright over here. Now, adding the color in multiple different stages like we did today isn't the best way to get an unbroken purple with food coloring. Although it could help, uh, a great way to get more even color coverage with a purple is to start cold with no acid and the yarn. Uh, and actually, I probably would layer it in batches because some, for me, these red threes could start striking even before I've added additional acid. But it does slow down the process so you are able to get more even coverage overall. And so while this layering did not make the breaking disappear, uh, it does make something that is softer and a lot more subtle uh, because each time we put it in, the areas where the reds went were different. And so we ended up with more of the red distributed evenly over the skein than we did over here. Now, would this work with acid dyes and other colors that break? Probably, it would work really well. It's just I knew, wanted to do this with food coloring because I know that it breaks so dramatically. Like we have bright color all the way through these skeins, just some purple and some blue. And so it's not always quite that obvious with a lot of acid dyes. So again, if you want to see me do this with acid dyes, I would be more than happy to mix something I know will break really well and then layer it on. So please let me know down in the comments below what you think. It may be harder to see now that the yarn is twisted up, but I just want to comment on how fast those red threes strike. 
uh, if you look, the yarn almost looks glazed because the dye really does just strike as quickly as it can. And often that's just sort of on the outside or even the halo of the fiber. Leslie Thurman, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. This has been something that I wanted to try for a while. And so I'm really glad that I was finally able to achieve it. Twisted up, the colorways look a lot, even more similar than they did when they were spread out. Just because in one, you can still tell there's a little bit more variation with the blue than the ones over on the right. Uh, but we did add the exact same amount of dye total to each of the batches. And so therefore there are gonna be those similarities and sometimes it could be easier or harder to see. So uh, anyway, I really hope that this helped really highlight those differences that you can get and from dyeing things all at once versus layering colors. And there's, again, no reason why you need to do it in three batches. You could do it in two. You could do it all at once without waiting long in between, but it's just another way to help get more coverage of colors onto your yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. This really is the biggest way that you can help support the content here. But as I've probably mentioned already, I do have an Etsy shop and a Patreon, and you can find links to everything down in the video description. While this isn't breaking violet, this is breaking purple food coloring, and I absolutely love the way these color changes turn out. And I hope that you enjoy me playing with this more as well. Thank you so much for watching.